<clears throat> Greetings, brothers and sisters. Once again, we bear witness there is no God but one, and there is no God with him. There is no God besides him. There is no God equal to him. There is no God greater than him. We can never thank him enough for his divine guidance and his wisdom and perfect understanding of all things. Being the true center and teacher of all holy prophets and of all holy apostles. Most of all, we thank him for the way of holiness that is clearly outlined in the scriptures for the edification of everyone who's willing simply to obey it. You know, God have a lot of good things in store for anyone and everyone who desire to serve him and obey him. And at the same time, God have some terrible punishment awaiting for anyone who reject him and despise him. I'd rather be one of the wise ones that accept everything he said, even that which don't make me feel good. But in his wisdom, he never designed the scriptures to make men feel good. The scriptures are implemented from God so men can obey them. You know, sometimes the working conditions in the company is not good. But if you don't have no other job, no other source of income, mm -hmm, you stay there and work because you want to eat. You don't like the heat that's there, no air conditioner, lunch break is too short, seems like the moment you unwrap <laughs> a pretzel. It's time to go right back to work. You don't like it, but you don't have no other source of income. And you enjoy one of the pleasures of life, eating. So what you do, you suffer it. You tolerate it. Viewers, this life is a miserable life, but it's more miserable without God. Some may say, well, I don't understand about this serving God, how much joy you can have. You're right. If you're not serving him, you don't understand. But in serving God, there's a two-edged sword. It's bittersweet. In other words, it'd be bitter in your life because of so much God requires for you to surrender. Only God going to tell you to surrender something give up something. The devil not going to tell you that. God tell you give up, give over, give in, submit so he can accept you. The devil, he said don't give up <laughs> nothing and I will always accept you. And that's one thing about the devil nobody have to sacrifice anything to serve Satan. Nothing. You don't have to give up nothing. In fact, because we are born in a world with sin and shaped into iniquity, fashioned in lust, we are already born in the motion of serving the devil. So God come along with a remedy to get us out of that state of just driving for the devil. And implement a law and say, well, huh, I believe I'm going to have to have man to be born all over again. Before that man can really serve me and obey me, I, I need for him to be born all over again. Go in water and receive the Spirit of God. So viewers, we, as always, it is our pleasure at times <laughs> to call your attention to the Bible. You hear us pleading with you all the time. Come back to Bible. And at the same time, it is in you to resist the scriptures. It is in everybody. I don't, even if you're born again, 
It's still in your nature to resist the scriptures. Now, to all the Truth of God followers, all the members of First Church, the lower auditorium is done. Amen. Amen. That's a blessing. Our lower auditorium is the first part of the campus that we will dedicate. We was here to have the 9.30 last night. <laughs> and I feel it all in my back and all in my bones. We had quite a bit of heavy things to lift. And I'm glad for the brothers that stuck around with us. <clears throat> After we asked all the sisters and even brothers who didn't get the memo to come in your work clothes, just so we can do our final cleanup and dust. A lot of it we did last night and brought more pews in. We <coughs> the pulpit, the carpet is down, the PA system is in, and we did all the plant arrangements last night, and oh, it looks good. You can go down there and shout by 12.30 if you like. Just make sure I'm done preaching. <laughs> but uh, she looks wonderful. And now I want to say to all the followers of the truth of God the world over, I, we can't, just like we can't hold you here in the gymnasium, you certainly we can't hold them in the lower auditorium. So the day of the dedication of the lower auditorium, the gymnasium will be an overflow room. And we have a large screen, a very, very, very large screen in here for those who cannot <clears throat> fit in the gym. And also, let me say this, for the safety of the saints, and if what I'm about to say offend you, then I pray for you. But I won't <laughs> go back on what I said. For the safety of the saints, and for the safety of the visitors, I have a medical staff that's here in the church because we have sisters and brothers that are doctors and nurses and all that so when time in fact before dedication service because the saints are starting to come back and i've been monitoring things and this one been reaching out to me that's uh connected to city hall and whatnot and uh the the virus here in pennsylvania has been dropping i hope it drops so far until it don't even exist no more not just in pennsylvania but abroad but not only here in Pennsylvania, but in other parts of the country. And uh, so, but what I'm going to start doing next Sunday, starting next Sunday, I'm going to have my medical staff for the safety of the saints start taking temperatures of different ones that come in. I'm going to ask you to please just be cooperative. It don't take long. And ain't no one going to take a thermostat or whatever, a thermometer and shove it in your mouth. They're not going to do that. And then why are going to do that? But I'm going to start taking your temperature. So, um, uh, and that way, uh, we know what to do and how to go about, especially when it comes time for dedication, because there are people who are going to come two and three and four hours early just to get a seat. And because there will be people from many places, uh, I have to resort to this for the safety and the protection of the saints and for one another and for even the sinner. So uh, we will announce when we're ready to dedicate. And uh, you just, don't, you don't have to call. You don't have to contact my secretary. You don't have to email and say when. We will announce when we will dedicate our lower auditorium. I'm telling you, the lower auditorium looks beautiful. The baptismal area, if you haven't chance, if you didn't see it after the first service, you'll get a chance to go in and look at it. Please remember, there are four entryways into the lower auditorium. One on Lindley Avenue, and I'm going to ask you to use all of them. So no one have to be crowded. One on Lindley Avenue, uh, one right there facing the parking lot where you see that wall that have those big spheres on them. Uh, and uh, you can go down that way. Also, the double doors that's attached to the main auditorium, I'm going to ask you not to use them for the simple fact uh, they are working in the main lobby area of the main auditorium. Uh, we, I got my blueprints back 
for the new balconies to be erected in the main auditorium. The crew have, have already been started on the cafeteria area. The, uh, uh, the cooking appliances is coming in for the cafeteria area. So I must say, and I must give God thanks, even in the midst of the pandemic, do you know the work haven't slowed down? The work have not slowed down at all. Even in the midst of the pandemic, we haven't fell short and haven't got behind and no bills, no nothing. No bills, no nothing. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and I'm checking with all the temples. They say, well, Pastor Jennings, seems like there's more money coming in now than it was when everybody was in the building. And uh, people have a love for the truth, love for the truth, even since the pandemic uh, been active. Do you know how many constantly still going down in water in the name of Jesus Christ in so many areas that people are not letting this virus keep them from being baptized? Amen. And, and, and there's some preachers that say, well, I wasn't baptized, no one. That's your business. We will never turn nobody away that want to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. God commanded, and we're going to perform it. Somebody asked me, suppose the government says, yeah, you got to shut your churches down. That's one time I will be one trillion percent rebellious. Yes, I will rebel. Amen. No, I ain't going to shut God's house down. Amen. If I got to be the only one in there. Amen. I preach and say amen to myself. Yeah. Amen. I preached the word of God and then say, Amen. Preach, Pastor Jennings. That's right. And then I go back in the Bible again. Amen. So, uh, and the, again, I say, we respect the rule of law. But when that law starts to tamper with the laws of God, right then you're stepping on the wrong turf. Amen. You're stepping on the wrong turf. The Bible says, Obey magistrate. That's true, but whenever a law is implemented and then that law is contrary to the law of God, you got your right to rebel and fight. Like when the law suggests that you swear when you go in the courtroom, the word of God tells us, don't you swear by anything in heaven or in earth. Some say, what shall I do, Pastor Jenner? Just say I'm firm and then tell the truth. Huh? Just say I'm firm. It's just like there's some religions that don't believe in blood transfusion. I, I, I don't, if that's what you believe, fine. I don't, I, the Bible says where there is no law, there is no transgression. If you take a blood transfusion, you have not violated God's law. But there's some, that's their religious belief. And you can't force them to take it if that's what they believe. Not at all. Amen. So, if the government ever get to the point where you're going to tell me you can't have no church, I'm going to turn my back on you. Amen. I'm going to call the biggest meeting that I can call. You'll go to jail. So what? I go to jail because the Bible says to forsake not right then that challenge the whole world. To forsake not the assemble of yourselves together as the manner of some is. Uh, but exalt, but he said, but so much the more, and exalting one another as you see the day approaching. So if the government ever said, you can't have no more church, I ain't paying you no mind. <laughs> I'm not paying you no mind. You can throw me in jail and put me under the jail. But you do have some scared saints <clears throat> that say, oh, no more church? Fine. Why? Because they don't want to go to church no way. They don't want to go. They'll say right away, well, I sit at home and watch them on youtube all right you can, that's all right but that ain't good enough that's right. because the law of god still looms in the air that's right. forsake not forsake not that law is still there that's right and you can't get around it all right. right let me dive into the bible god willing and let us remember after this session we're going into the lower auditorium so we can do our final dusting. We ain't going around there to stand around and lollygag and all that stuff. We want to get all that final dusting done and get it in the way and out the way. And uh, 
and get all things ready. You can get a chance to look in the baptismal area and whatnot and please, just, no need to go try to baptize yourself. Just look and keep moving. You don't want to crowd up in one area because we got work to do. We got work to do and got work to have to be done. And uh, God willing, I was scheduled to go to Chicago yesterday, but my body was just too tired. We was here from morning to evening, and we worked all day. But God willing, we'll be going to Chicago on Tuesday. Uh, we talked to them. Uh, they gave us a church there. There used to be a Masonic Hall. And they converted it to a church. It's already bought and paid for. I talked to my real estate church agent and told them, you know, contact the people so we can do a uh, title search and make sure everything is clear. And then we get the attorney to transfer everything over to First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ in Chicago. You will have a meeting house. And uh, we will be able to cram you in there and feed you. God be our helper. You know, it's beautiful. In the midst of a pandemic, God still look out for the church. He still looks out for the church. You know, and whoever heard a pandemic and you still make progress. That's, that's only God can pull off something like that. In the midst of a pandemic and you still make progress. And the success, why? Why is this? Because... This is not of Pastor Jennings. This is not Pastor Jennings' church. The Lord says that the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall perform this. And this is why the work of God don't stop in the midst of anything. In the midst of anything. When God is in it, I say God. When God is in it, then God Almighty just keeps things moving according to his divine will and his divine precepts. All right, I want the book of Revelation, if you will. I want to work on the importance of hearing God's word. Hearing God's word. I want to greet all of my extended family there in Wisconsin and also Chicago and Detroit and also throughout the state of uh, Indiana and California. I want to greet all of you in Portland, Oregon, and state of Washington, and Florida, and all of the saints on the East Coast, Midwest, West Coast, to all of my brothers and sisters in Canada, throughout all the Caribbean islands. We thank God for all of you, too, to all the saints that are in Australia, and New Zealand, and Sweden, and the Netherlands, and Great Britain, you that have reached out to us. The gospel is falling and doing a beautiful job there in Saudi Arabia wants to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. The United Arab Emirates wants to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. They're pouring out of France and out of Paris and out of Germany. Well, think of it. God is living up to his word. He said the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall perform this and then declare he that all nations, all of them, shall flow unto it. It what? His church. It's God's church. And you bear in mind, God's church is built upon scripture. Let me just say to all of our viewers throughout the entire state of Mississippi. Amen. Now, we found the place in Jackson, Mississippi, God willing, and we are pursuing it. God be our helper. Jackson, Mississippi, one of the major cities there because I need a large place for Mississippi because we got a large crowd. When I first went to Jackson, Mississippi, we baptized 92 souls. Amen. Most men wouldn't baptize nine souls in nine years. But we have a very large following down there. So Jackson, give us some time. We're working on God willing to get that uh, thing done out the way. Also Dallas, Texas. Amen. When things get up and running down there also, we hope to get you moving forward. Houston is back up moving, but in the state of Texas, the virus is really, really circulating like wildfire in Texas. So let us pray that the mercy of God will be upon the world and rid the world of this virus. But what I would say is this, out of all the calamity that is going on in the world, Man is still hard here. 
still hate God, still reject the wisdom of God, still make fun of God, still make mockery of the words of God. What is it going to take to humble man? Calamity after calamity will have to come upon the earth and man still won't change. After every calamity hit the earth, you will have some that will turn to God. But everybody? No. When I was a child, Remember, and some of you can bear witness that are listening and watching and you that are here. When I was a child coming up, when it was thunder and lightning, we wasn't even allowed to play. When it was thunder and lightning, my mother and father made us sit down. And they used to say, the Lord is talking. We had to sit down and turn the radios off and turn the TVs off and, and turn the lights off and whatnot. And some of the older parents would take sheets and cover the mirrors. And then now fools be out there playing, get struck by lightning, and they lay down and say, oh, what a rush. <laughs> no fear. This is a sick, 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 sick world. Right. Ladies and gentlemen and viewers, there were seven churches in Asia. Yeah. In other words, there were seven locations of one people. God only had one church, one people. But as we have hundreds upon and many thousands of followers, there's only one body, one church. In the book of Revelation, mm -hmm. the Lord our God was seen by the Apostle John. That's right. And the revelation. Now, the word revelation means that which has been made known, that which is revealed. John, the brother of James, the son of Zebedee, was an apostle made by hands of heaven, was one of the twelve who walked with Jesus, talked with Jesus, ate with him, handled him, <clears throat> witnessed his death, was among the brethren after the Lord rose from the dead the third day in the glorified state, meaning with the spiritual body, a body that took on the same behavior and the same nature and the same characteristics as the spirit itself. And standing there being a witness of the resurrection, not only that, he also witnessed the ascension. Witnessed Jesus pass through the heavens. He was one of the ones among the apostles when the Lord rose and gave them charge and told them, go to Jerusalem, you stay there. For it take God until you be endued with power from on high. And when the Holy Ghost fell, about 120 was in the upper room that was blessed <clears throat> to receive the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue as the Spirit of the living God give utterance. Now, history, not the Bible. Let me just clear it. History, not the Bible, says John died 96 A.D in a pot of boiling oil on the Isle of Patmos. You don't have to believe it. <laughs> I don't. Why don't you believe it, Pastor Jenny? Because it's not written. That's just something that a historian came up with. The Bible never says when he died, how he died. But I do know he ain't living now. <laughs> and that's all that matters. The Bible never said he died in a pot of boiling oil. Bible never said he died 96 A.D. It didn't say that. No. History says that. Theology says that. The Bible don't say that. That's right. But here's what the Bible said. Revelation. Revelation. Chapter 1. Chapter 1. And we'll start reading in verse 1. All right. The revelation of Jesus Christ. That starts off sounding good. Sounding good. 
the revealing of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass yes and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John and who bear record of the word of God now John bear record that's right meaning it was recorded that's right of the words of God uh -huh. And of the testimony of Jesus Christ. Yes. And of all things that he saw. All right. Blessed is he that readeth. Blessed is he that read. And they that hear the words of this prophecy. Yes. And keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. Now, viewers, I want to encourage you to keep those things. Those things. Which are written therein. What is in the Bible? What you mean keep what's in the scriptures? Value it. That's right. Respect it. Honor it. That's right. Revere it. But I can't do none of those things without understanding. That's right. Because it is written in all that I'm getting, what should we get? Understand. You know, if you don't understand the value of something, you'll treat it like anything else. That's right. If you don't understand the value of the word of the Lord, you will treat it like anything else under the sun. This here is the book of life. That's right. This here is the book of deeds. That's right. This here is the book of wisdom. Right. This here is the book of God's law. That's right. This here contains the judgment of God. Yeah. So our faith, our belief, our standing, our entire life from beginning to end is all itemized here clearly in the book. And if anybody think by any means you can hijack some fictitious belief and that belief will stir you around the word of God, yeah. you can believe whatever you want and you can profess whatever you please. But it's not a belief under the sun that can cause you to get around anything, anything, what the Lord our God has said. All right. And keep those things which are written therein. Come on, son. For the time is at hand. Yeah. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come. Now is present, was, past, is present. That's right. Is Father, yes. is, is Holy Ghost. That's right. When he became was, when he gave up his natural life by offering up a natural body on the cross. That's right. Truly this man was the Son of God. Son of God. Son. His natural life. He no longer lived by the natural. That's a past tense life. That's right. What do you mean? Jesus no longer exists. In the form of flesh and blood. Truly this man was Truly the Son of God. Truly this man was the Son of God. He was oh, a natural man with natural life and blood in the natural body. But he no longer lives right. by the natural. But Paul said in that he liveth. He liveth by the power of God. That's right. All right. Grace be unto you in peace from him which is and which was. And which is to come. Uh -huh. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Yes. And from Jesus Christ who was the faithful witness. Uh -huh. And the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth. Now here you had John begin to describe the Lord. That's right. And he saw the Lord mm -hmm. in detail. And I turned to see the voice that spake I want you to get me. chapter and verse now. Revelation chapter 1, we're at verse 12. All right. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. I turned to see the voice of who? Of him. Them. Of him. Well, I'm going, I'm going to believe what the Lord said to the apostle. That's right. Amen. I believe there's only one. I will hold that in the face of of everybody. And I turned to see the voice that spake when with me. When the Lord spoke to me, I only heard one voice. That's right. Huh? The voice. I heard the voice of one that spoke to me. That's right. This, this, this work that we're doing by God's permission all around the world. When God spoke to me 
over 40 years ago about this work, I didn't hear voices. No, no. No, no. I didn't hear no family or group of gods. That's right. Not at all. I heard the voice of one. The voice. Glory to God. Glory to God. Someone said, I don't believe that you heard God's voice. It's too late now. Hmm. <laughs> Amen. You come way too late. Listen, I heard it over, over. I over. heard it over 40 years ago. Wonderful. So you come along now and say, I don't believe it. I don't care. You may not <laughs> believe right. my suit is blue. What do I care? Hmm. Huh? Amen. Your unbelief ain't going to change the color. No. Lord, our God spoke to me. Or if God didn't speak to me, I wouldn't be doing this. Mm -hmm. Especially this time of year. It's summertime. <laughs> huh? Amen. It's summertime and it's Father's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. That's right. Brother, and I'm pretty sure us men, right. we can find other things to do right. other than sit in a church with masses on. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Glory to take God. We can find other stuff to do. That's right. Amen. We'll be right out there like many of these young folk who's on a, a break for school in the pool and spreading the virus everywhere. Amen. Are you getting what I am telling you? That's right. But I had a real vision, plural, from God. So I can identify with what the statement that the apostle said here. And I turned to see the voice that I spake with me. I turned to see the voice that spake with me. That spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candles. Now I want to itemize this and take it apart, viewers. I want to itemize it and take it apart. Mm. I want to take it apart. I saw seven golden candlesticks. Golden candlesticks. That's right. Now, viewers, as I said on many occasions, mm -hmm. I'm one who loves history. All kind of history. When you study the history of Egypt, mm -hmm. the Egyptians did not have the alphabets like what we have here now. They didn't have that. But they told the history in pictures and symbols. And those pictures and symbols were called hieroglyphics. Even in the word of God, they used symbols images and without knowledge of what these things represent you won't get what it's talking That's right. now here you had the bible says what and i turned to see the voice that spake with me and, and being turned i saw seven golden candlesticks god using symbols images seven golden candlesticks represent the seven churches of asia why was it called golden candlestick? Golden, golden. golden mean precious. You don't need a candlestick if light is already there. That's right. The power of a candlestick is the flame of it. That's right. The fire of it. So the flame of God is the power of God and the power of God is the presence of God in the church. That's right. And when the church is of God, it's golden, golden. meaning it's valuable, yeah. precious. Right. And, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks. Listen, listen at this. Listen at the language of the book. In the midst of the seven candlesticks. Of the seven candlesticks. One light. One light. Unto the Son of Man. Hold it right there. The same image, same form, same fashion, same figure that he had when he was on earth. That's right. The same form was seen. That's right. The same shape was seen. That's right. What was the difference, Pastor Jennings? It was no longer natural. That's right. You better give me Revelation 3.18. Let me see if that's... What I want, Revelation 3.18. Let me see if that's what I want. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 18. All right. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire. Yes. That thou mayest be rich. Uh -huh. And white raiment that thou mayest be clothed. Yes. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. I believe in the book of Revelation it says, Thus saith 
the Son of God, That's right. who eyes is as fire, That's right. showing you a change from the natural state. Now, when he walked here on earth, he was flesh and blood. The Bible says, the children of partake of the flesh and blood, he also likewise himself took part of the same. That's right. That he through death may destroy him that has the power of death. He didn't take on the naked of angels. What do you mean, Pastor Jennings? When the Bible says that Jesus did not take on the naked of angels, because before he was manifested in the flesh, he already had the natures of angels. That's right. What was the natures of angels? Who made his written, angels spirits. It is written. It is written. Mm -hmm. He make his angels spirits. Spirits. So God had that nature on already. That's right. And God had to take on a nature that he didn't have. That's so right. That's what is meant that God was manifested in the flesh. In the flesh. God's flesh was God's only begotten of the Father. God's flesh was the mediator. I had someone write me and said, Pastor Jennings said that the Son of God was the mediator. It ain't no Bible that says that. Wow, you don't know the Bible. For there is one God. Let, let, let's get the book of Timothy now. In, in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2 and at verse 5. There is one God. And one mediator. What nature was the mediator? Between God and men. The, ma the man. The what? The man. The what? The man. No, the spirit. The man. The man. There's one mediator between God and man. The man. The flesh, the man, the body, the human. Christ Jesus. That was the mediator. That's right. That's why Jesus kept saying, ain't nobody coming to the Father except by me. Except by me. What do you mean? The mediator stood between the human race and the eternal spirit. That's right. And then the mediator took on the title, the door. That's right. In order to get to the eternal life that was in him, you have to first accept the performance or the deeds or the acts or the actions of the natural life, That's which right. was made right. by the eternal life. No man cometh unto the Father. Listen at Jesus. In St. John chapter 14 and at verse 6. It ain't no man getting to the Spirit. But by me. But by what? But by me. That's why he had to die, viewers. You couldn't kill God. You couldn't kill the Spirit. But you can kill that natural man. And the natural man, it is someone, I had another person write me and say, you said Jesus was killed. Pastor Jennings, that's a lie. Hmm. God wasn't killed. I didn't say that. No. I didn't say God was killed. No. Jesus was killed. That's right. Well, how was Jesus was killed if he's God? That flesh wasn't God. That's right. Is the Bible saying Jesus was killed? Yes. Yeah. It says they have killed prince the prince. Of life. of life. Now the scripture says they have granted him a murderer. murderer. He was murdered. He was killed. But ye denied the Holy One. Listen at this. Now in the book of Acts chapter 3, we're at verse uh, 14. Come on, Simon. But ye denied the Holy One and ye, the just. He denied the Holy One. And the just. And the honest one. And desired a murderer to be granted unto you. You desire a murderer to be granted unto you. And killed the Prince of Life. No. They killed God. And killed the prince of life. The term prince right there show you is lower than a king. That's right. The flesh in nature is lower than the nature of spirit. That's right. The spirit is the king and the king got and took on the prince and the prince was flesh and blood. That's right. And that's the part that was killed. And killed they the prince killed of life. the prince of life. Whom God has they, raised from the God dead. Whom God has raised from the raised dead. From the dead. Now they killed the prince of Kill, life, the prince. and the spirit got back in the prince of life. That's right. And allowed the prince of life to take on the glory That's of right. the king. That's right. And he come on back. Hallelujah. Still with the same title. That's right. Prince of life. Prince of same life. title. That's right. Son of God. Same shape. Same form. Right. But the only difference is now he got a glorified body. That's right. He got a spiritual body now, and that spiritual body behave and act and function like the spirit itself. That's right. In other words, now it's an eternal body. That's right. That has the shape 
of the human body. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. Let's go back to the book of Revelation, son. Back in Revelation 1 and verse 13. This is so good. Listen. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks. In the midst of the seven candlesticks. One, one like unto the Son of Man. Like unto the Son of Man. Clothed with a garment down to the foot. All right, viewers, let's dress them up. Clothed with the garment down to his foot. And gird about the paps with a golden girdle. Wait a minute. He was girded about the paps with a golden girdle. Now let us understand this. The purpose of a girdle is to support the body. Hallelujah. Support the body. Well, men wear them and women wear them. Yeah. Amen. Supports the body. Support that which moves. That's right. And contain it and constrain it. That's right. Put it under subjection. Yeah. Well, the word of God is a girdle. Because it is a red tip to girdle up your mind. Your mind needs to be wrapped and supported by scripture because the mind has too much flexibility. Yeah. In other words, Paul says it this way. Yeah. Don't be so soon shaken in mind, in mind, in mind. nor be troubled. be troubled. You know, an unstable person. Uh, I believe the uh, one brother in the scripture says a double minded man for let not that man think that he shall receive listen, anything listen, of listen, the Lord listen 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 in the book of St. James chapter 1 and now we're at verse 8 James 1 begin at verse 7 at verse 7 alright for let not that man think begin that at he verse shall 6. at verse 6 alright but let him ask in faith let him ask in faith nothing waver nothing waver don't be shaken for he that wavereth is like a he wave that is of the shaky. sea he that is unstable look how God categorizes you He's if like you're unstable an unstable person I don't trust. I don't care who they are. That's right. I can't trust them because they're not dependable. They right. let you down too often, too much. That's right. The word of God says, For he that waveth is like a wave he of the that sea. He that is unstable is like the wave of the sea, tossed. Driven with the wind. Driven with the wind. Tossed. 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 That's what many folks are mentally and emotionally. Yeah. They are tossed. tossed. They are back and forth with God, back and forth with church, back and forth with serving God. They know the way of God is right. But because they lack stability and lack Toss. soundness, the elements of the world have them tossed. Toss. Uh -huh. For let not that man think. Don't let a person like this think that he shall don't receive you even anything. Think that anything you won't get anything of the Lord. Of the Lord. A double-minded man. Uh oh. Here. 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 James one and verse eight. A double-minded man is unstable. And how much? in all his ways. I don't care if you're a man or a woman. That's right. When you double-minded, you're unstable. unstable. When you double-minded, you can't be trusted. That's right. Because you're a talk out of both sides of your mouth. That's true. Double-minded. One double thing about God, that's why God manifests himself in the flesh and, and then that flesh was stable in mind in serving God. That's right. And, and, and until the Apostle Paul recommended by God permission. Let this mind be in you. Do you hear in the second chapter of the book of Philippians? And at verse 5. Let this mind be in you. What is God doing? Making a mental recommendation. That's right. God knows that our mind is messed up. That's right. Our mind is full of foolishness. That's right. And the Holy Ghost think of no evil. Amen. But our mind corrupt. Oh, yeah. Wicked, ungodly, think foul things about others. That's right. We're looking a person face some folk and, and can't stand them. It's true. Think all type of evil about them. If we just hear something about somebody, don't even know them. That's true. Sometimes we rush the judgment right away because who the person is that told them, and right away they say, "Well, they come from a good, <laughs> right. a good source." And but if that good source says something about them, they say they lying. That's true. <laughs> huh? That's right. They say right away, "Oh, they lying." That's right. Come on, son. Let this mind be in you. What? Let this mind be in you. Let this mind, human family. I want to encourage you to get the mind of Jesus now. I see. Jesus, the Son of God, had a mind of submission. That's that right. flesh had a mind of submission and. That flesh had a mind of surrendering. That's right. He surrendered so much until he offered up his own life. Right. Amen. The Bible come along and say how God offered up that body once for all, once for all. through the eternal spirit. That's Within right. the mind of Jesus, yeah. there was no selfishness. That's right. Amen. He, he didn't walk the earth being selfish. Mm -hmm. The nature of God is spirit, and the nature of God was, is not a selfish nature. And when the Son of God walked earth flesh and blood, neither was he selfish in his deeds and in his acts, nor in his life. Right. Uh -huh. Let this mind be in you. Have this mind. Which was also in Christ Jesus. Have this mind. Sometimes I meet men who claim they're preachers. 
60s and 70s and 80s years old and more unstable than some men who are only in their 20s and 30s and 40s. That's true. So unstable, not sound in God's word. That's right. Amen. Don't have no spiritual structure in God. That's right. They believe anything mm -hmm. and lean to anything, you know. There's a, a lizard called a chameleon. Yeah. And a chameleon changes mm -hmm. colors wherever it lands it changed the color and blend in. Right. Have you ever met people with that type of spirit? They got a chameleon spirit. They, they don't want to offend nobody. <laughs> and they don't want to stand out. That's true. So they blend in. That's right. Amen. They, you say three gods, they say, yes, three yep. gods. You say uh, flesh and blood is in heaven, they say, yeah, flesh and blood is in heaven. That's right. You say flesh and blood come from heaven, they say, yeah, flesh and blood came from heaven. <laughs> You said that your wife can be the assistant pastor. They say, yes, your wife can be the assistant pastor. You say, well, you ain't got to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. They say, yeah, you ain't got to be baptized. That's right. You say, well, I got the Holy Ghost. I ain't never speak in tongues. They say, I ain't never speak too, and I got it. Amen. Double-minded. Hmm? Double-minded. 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 That's right. Get me, get me, double-minded. Double-minded. The truth of God is a single-minded program. That's right. Our mind, we bring you the mind of God. Right. Every time you watch this program, we introduce you, introduce to you God's thoughts. That's right. God's standard. God's version of the truth. <laughs> That's right. Huh? That's right. You see, you got three versions of truth. God's version, the devil's version, man's version. Amen. And there's only one version that I lean to. That's God's version that's right. of the truth. That's right. And when I hear God's version, he said, I, I, I'm alone. There ain't no God with me. There's no God before me. There's no God besides me. There's no God after me. In fact, he goes far as saying, uh, I don't know any God. I don't know any God. That's God's version of that's the right. truth. That's oh, right. dumb, ignorant, hell-bound man said, oh, yeah, there's two more to help the one God. He, did, he didn't make the heavens and earth alone. There were three partners he got. There was an, there's an association of gods. Yeah. That's, that's man. That's and man. the devil come along and said, well, I believe there's one God, and I tremble. That's right. But when I get in you, I'll make you believe it's three. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Amen. All right. Back in James um, 1 and at verse uh, Real quick. At verse 8. A double-minded double man. man is unstable in all his ways. In all his ways. Uh -huh. Back in our Revelation chapter 1 and at verse 13. Yes. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks. One like unto the Son of Man. One like unto the Son of Man. Clothed with a garment down to the foot. And. And girded about the paps with a golden girdle. Now, golden girdle. You take the word of God is precious. Oh, yeah. It's a golden girdle. Yeah. It's the most valuable instrument you can ever run up on that it give you the stability you never had. That's right. Nothing, and I want you to get this, nothing in the world right. can give you divine stability Amen. other than God's word. Amen. Did you hear what I said? That's right. Nothing in the world can give you divine stability, yeah. spiritual stability. That's right. Ain't no witch doctor can do it. No who do, no who Amen. do, no you do, none of it. None of, None of it. It'll give you the type of stability you have never had. That's right. Hey Amen. There's some folk that are naturally stable, yeah. but having natural stability is not greater than having spiritual stability. That's right. Because sometimes a person have natural stability, they are stable in their thought. Yeah. But they're not stable in their subconscious thought. That's true. Huh? That's true. Do you see what I'm telling you? That's right. They are stable in some of their emotions. Mm -hmm. God Almighty can give you stability in all your emotions. That's right. See, when you get the stability of God, he come along and put a girdle on your mind and put a girdle on your heart and put a girdle on your spirit and put a girdle on your body. That's God right. come along and discipline the whole being. Mm -hmm. There ain't a source in the world yeah. that can give you that type of stability, right. but God and God everlasting word. Right. Well, you may want to know, how do I get this type of stability? You, he that has the ear to hear, right. let him hear. Yeah. You got to hear a stable message that create a stable man That's and right. a stable woman. That's right. And you got to submit to the spirit of stability. That's right. What is the spirit of stability? The spirit of stability is the spirit of God. That's right. 
You see, God preached stability all through the scriptures. Through the scriptures. Thank God that when he brought that message and gave it to the apostles, amen. And when the apostles said, touch not, touch not. that's the message of stability. Yeah. Handle, not. Handle not, that's the message of stability. Right. Don't let your feet be quick to run into uh, mischief. Right. right then, he's controlling where you go that's right. and where you can't go. Right. Close your eyes from seeing evil. Having stable eyesight, That's stop right. your ears from hearing about blood. Right. Having stable hearing, my, my, ain't nothing bring that type of stability no. like God can. Right. He come, you see, the word of God come along first and break you. Yeah. Ain't nobody need a cast unless a bone is broken. Mm -hmm. So God come along and beat you with the word. Amen. Beat your will. Amen. Break you. And then once they break you. He come back and heal you. Yeah. And while he's healing you, he have you encased in his word like a cast. That's right. So your mind can get mended right. That's your right. heart can get mended right. Hallelujah. Your spirit can get mended right. That's right. And your body, glory be to God, can get mended right. That's right. You try to do this on your own, you will fail. That's right. You will fail. Oh, yeah. Anybody think they can do this on their own? They have already failed. Already. All right. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks. Give chapter and verse. Revelation 1 and at verse 13. In the midst. Of the seven candlesticks. What is it? One like unto the son of man. Uh -huh. Clothed with a garment down to the foot. Yeah. And girded about the paps with a golden girdle. Uh -huh. His head and his hairs were white like wool. His head mm -hmm. and his, his hairs. hairs were white like wool. What? As white as snow. His head and his hairs was white like wool, white as snow. As white his as snow. head and his hairs was white like wool, mm -hmm. white as snow. Yes. Right then, right then, you're going to find them that's fighting for God being black. That's we'll right. see it right there. You see that, Pastor Jennings? Right. What race of people got a woolly hair yes. other than black people? That's right. Well, tell me this. What race is God of? Amen. What race is God of? That's right. God is of no race. No. God is before race. That's right. The Son of God come from the tribe of Judah. From Judah. That's right. His flesh did. Yes. His flesh was the son of David. That's right. His flesh was Jewish. That's right. The spirit that was in that flesh, which is Jehovah, God, I am, that is of no race. No race. For the spirit have no ethnic background. That's right. Until the Bible said, without father. Without mother. Without mother. Without no descent. Race. God without descent, mm -hmm. having neither beginning of days nor end of life. Right. So yes, I agree that the son of God, the son of man, was Jewish, Jewish, come out of Abraham's seed, and That's come right. from the house of David, and That's come right. from the tribe of Judah. But the spirit of the living God is not a Jew. No, no. The spirit of the living God is not African. Oh, no. The spirit of the living God is not European. No. The spirit of the living God is not Hindu. No. The spirit of the living God is not from Poland. No. Or from Australia. That's right. Someone say, well, where's the spirit of God from, Pastor Jennings? <laughs> Hallelujah to God. The spirit of the living God is from everlasting. That's right. Ah! From everlasting. Until the word of God says, from, from everlasting, everlasting, to everlasting, to everlasting, thou art God, thou art black, Amen. thou art black, thou art God, you better hear me, thou art white, thou art God, thou art Spanish, thou art God, from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God, thou art God, so God is of no race, right. what John was looking at here, was not describing the ethnic background no. of God. No. Not at all. Oh, no. The word of God was using symbols, That's right. images, yeah. in your language, hieroglyphics. That's right. So you can understand the spiritual side of God. That's right. The hairs, listen his, at this. In Revelation 1 and verse 14, 
His head and his hair, his head and his hair, were white like wool, as white as snow. It's not dealing with the texture, no, of his hair, no. It was dealing with the color. That's right. Because to point out two things, head, point out two things. The his head, head of his head was white like wool, as white, white as snow. As white wool as snow. is one texture. Right. Snow is another texture. Yeah. Wool is one texture. Snow is another texture. It point out the color. Color. The color. His head and his hairs were white. Was white. Like wool. Like wool. As white. As white. As snow. You see that? That's right. It compared the color of his hair to the color of wool. That's right. And compared the color of hair to the color of snow. That's right. Snow is one texture. Wool is another. That's right. So it's not talking about God had woolly hair, no. or Jesus was walking around with woolly hair. It ain't talking about that. No. The, the importance is on the color. Read it again. His head and his hair. His head, his head. Head. Amen. Now, many of you just focus on hair. Right. Many, you got a head, but everybody don't have hair on the head. That's right. Huh? That's you right. overlook that. His head. His head. And his, his head. Mm -hmm. If you remove the hair, the Bible points out the head. Head, that's right. And then it points out the hair after. His head. His head. And his hairs. And his hairs. Were white like wool. Was white like wool. As white as snow. Huh? Amen. Do you see that? Amen. Snow is one texture. Wool is another. That's right. Amen. Snow show you the change of climate. Wool shows you sacrifice. That's right. When Jesus came here, brother, he changed the climate. That's right. That means he changed everything. He come along to bring about change. In other words, Jesus believed in revolution. Yeah. He come and brought about change. There wasn't nobody preaching nothing about no being born again. No. And here Nicodemus bragging about Nicodemus had uh, knowledge and all that stuff, but to the uh, subject of being born again, Nicodemus was dumb as a brick. <laughs> That's right. I mean, just straight up dumb. Amen. When Jesus come along and tell him, uh, uh, you got to be born again. Born and, again. You know, very, very, if, you, if you're not born again, you can't get in. Nicodemus come along, wait a minute, Jesus. Listen, mm. I'm a grown man and uh, I got some age on me. Right. How can a man, when he's old, oh. right, right then, showing his ignorance? Yeah. How can a man, when he's old, he's born. go back second in, time at the second time into his mother's womb and go be back born. into his mother's womb and be born? You mm -hmm. see, education don't give it to you. No, amen. Because what Jesus threw out the Nicodemus was from the Spirit. That's right. Because if we had to go back into our mother's body to be born again, that woman probably had died. Yeah. That's right. Here we are, a bunch of grown men. I mean, it, it, listen, I come from a family. It was eight of us. Can you imagine all of us? All right, we want to be born again. And here's my mother be 89 next month. <laughs> and we wait till she's 89 to decide we want to be born again. All of us got to stand in a straight line and start going head first. My Lord. Back into the womb. That'll never happen. Oh, no. That'll never happen. I'm laying the groundwork to show you the stupidity. <laughs> That was in an educated man like Nicodemus. That's right. Because believe it or not, I had people write me and said I was wrong for preaching. You got to be born of the water. And said when you're born of the water, uh, that meant Jesus was talking about when the, your mother water break. Mm -hmm. My Lord. Mm -hmm. What was that? That was the Nicodemus syndrome. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's, That's right. all that was. That's right. That was the Nicodemus syndrome. Mm. Now, and I have other fools. <laughs> I had other fools tell me, well, Pastor Jennings, we don't recognize our first birth. You so you too deep for me. Right. How can you walk around if you don't exist? Mm. Your first birth, what brought you here on the planet? That's right. You see, that's when you're so deep, you're fools, you're that's ignorant, right. you're blind, you're deaf, you're dumb, you're a hellion. <laughs> that's right. Only a hellion don't recognize the first birth. If you don't recognize the first birth, how can you talk? Amen. How can you walk? Amen. Why are you speaking? Right. How did you get a name? <laughs> you got people, you got preachers that preach this. 
we don't recognize the first birth. <laughs> you don't recognize your first birth, how you have a birthday. Right. Stop trying to be deeper than the Bible. That's just right. come on back to the Bible. That's right. And just, just govern yourself according to the Bible. That's it. Amen. So when he come along, he had the hairs of his hair was white like wool. As white wool, as snow. As white as snow. Wool represents sacrifice. That's you right. know, he was the son of man, mm -hmm. was called Lamb of God. The next day, John seeth Jesus. Listen at this. In the book of St. John, chapter 1, and at verse 29. And then now all, I want to go in more detail that wool represent him being offered up, cut off. Yeah. I want to go to the book of Isaiah, Isaiah with that and show you how he was, how he was brought. That's right. All right. It's uh, St. John chapter 1 and verse 29. Uh -huh. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him. Yeah. And saith, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the sacrifice of God. Which taketh away the sin of the world. Now, the reason why he was called Lamb of God, because in the Old Testament, I believe you had Aaron, the high priest, and the sons of Aaron, Ithamar, Eleazar, Abihu, and Nadab, the sons of Aaron. Right. And Aaron was the high priest, and when they offered the sacrifice, they had to get a sacrifice that did not have a spot or blemish mm -hmm. and had no flaws. Right. And then the priest would lay his hands upon the head of the sacrifice and confess his sins and the sins of the people upon the sacrifice. Right. That sacrifice or that goat was an example right. or, rep or representing the death and the offering up of Jesus, the Son of Man. That's right. And after the high priest will uh, confess his sins and the sins of Israel upon the goat, then a fit man, That's right. meaning a qualified man, will come and take the goat, leave the goat away, which represent the taking away of the sins of the people. That's right. Now you're bad mind. Even though they went through that uh, motion, nobody's sins was taken away at all. No. Because back then, those performances was just a shadow, shadow. of good things to come. Right. And the good thing that was to come was Jesus himself. Right. You better give me the 53rd chapter, if uh, I'm correct, of Isaiah. the book of the prophet Isaiah. Chapter 53, we'll start at verse 4. Real quick. Surely he has borne our griefs. He has borne our griefs. And carried our sorrows. Carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken. Yes. Smitten of God and afflicted. Uh -huh. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Jesus was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Jesus was bruised for your iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon chastisement him. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and, and by and with, with his stripes, we, we are healed. We are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. Look at here. All of us was like sheep without a shepherd. We have turned everyone to his own way. And that's the way men are now. That's right. They're going after their own way. Right. Uh -huh. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Right then to show you the separation of the nature of human and divine. That's right. God laid upon him. The spirit laid upon the sacrifice. The spirit laid upon that flesh. The spirit laid upon that body, the iniquity of everybody. Right. Just like the priest laid his hands upon the head of the goat and confessed his sins and the sins of the people upon the head of the goat. Yeah. And the goat took the blame of what the people done, but the sacrifice itself done nothing. That's right. Jesus didn't do the wrong. That's right. He took the blame. And the Lord has laid the Lord on him. The Lord laid it on him. The iniquity of us the all. The iniquity of everybody. He was oppressed. He was oppressed. And he was afflicted. He was afflicted. Yet he opened out his mouth. He didn't retaliate. He is brought as a lamb he to the slaughter. He is brought as a lamb. He is brought as a lamb mm, to, to the, the slaughter. slaughter. And what else? And as a sheep before as her shearers sheep. is dumb. As sheep. As a sheep before her shearers before is dumb. Before her shearers are dumb. Now, when you go and share a sheep, you remove the wool off of them. That's right. Eh? That's Amen. Right. That fella get those clippers and he removed the wool. That's right. Thank God. So when the Bible said the hairs of his head was white I like agree. wool, white as snow, yes. thank God the spirit had to come out of that wool. That's right. You see, wool covered the sheep. Yeah. Amen. And that flesh was a nothing but a covering for God to work in. It That's was right. a veil. That's right. Thank God until the prophet said, Verily, thou art a God that hidest thyself. Yes. And the apostle Paul addressed that flesh right. as, a veil. as a veil. He addressed that flesh as a veil. As a veil. Right. He said he consecrated a new living and living way, way through, through the veil. That is to that say, is his, flesh. To say his, flesh. his flesh. That is to say that wool. That's that right. is to say that body. That's that right. is to say 
That son. That son. Do you get what I'm telling you? And as a sheep before her shears is so dumb. And come along, the hairs of his head. White was like wool. White like wool. White as snow. White as snow. All right, what else we have here? And as a sheep before his shearers is dumb. Go son. back to Revelation. Come on, son. Back in Revelation chapter 1 and at verse 13. All right. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. Yeah. And his eyes. His eyes. Were as a flame of fire. I remember many, 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 many years ago when I didn't even have half of the following like we have now. I was preaching in New Orleans, Louisiana. Amen. And there was a fellow that rose up. They were contending that God was black and God had uh, God eyes supposed to have been red or brown and that's what they was contending for <clears throat> and I got and I, I asked the fella I said where it is in the Bible that uh, God had red eyes or brown <laughs> eyes and he got the scripture right here that William's about the red mm -hmm. about the read listen at this and his eyes were as a flame of fire now and when he read that he really thought he had he had something he closed his Bible up hit the Bible, he said, God eyes is red just like mine. <laughs> I told him, I said, your eyes is not red unless you drunk. That's it. Huh? That's right. Now let me dissect this and break it down and just put all the Bible together with it. That's right. The Bible says this. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Listen at the language of the Bible. The Bible at no time says his eyes were red. No. The Bible made a comparison here. And his eyes his were as. eyes were as. A flame of fire. Do you see that? That's right. Now I got the, now if the Bible says his eyes were as. as a flame, a of, flame fire. of fire. Right. Now you got to go into the characteristics of fire. Mm -hmm. And you will understand the characteristics of his eyes. That's right. Huh? That's right. Amen. The eyes were as. As a flame a of fire. A flame of fire. Let's just look at what fire do, you know. Yeah. Fire is very good uh, when it's comfortable. That's right. You got a nice fireplace. You sit in front of a fireplace long enough, that thing make you so drowsy and sleepy. And But if that fire go beyond the fireplace and start climbing up the walls and the ceiling, you're going to be water woke. Yes, you will. You're going to run for your life hollering, That's right. screaming. That's right. Eyes like a flame of fire flame mean of fire. the God of heaven is a consuming fire okay. and that same God comforter. of heaven he is a, com a comforter. comforter now in the days of the prophet Elijah yeah. thank God in the book of Kings I want you to stay with me and follow me real good yeah. uh, the prophet amen he ran up on Baal prophets because they were many yeah. and they built the sacrifice and what now or rather built the altar and offer the children, they can offer up the sacrifice. sacrifice. And they called on Baal from mm. morning to the time of the evening sacrifice. That's didn't right. get no answer. That's right. And the prophet Elijah, he mocked him. Mm. He said, call on your God. And maybe he maybe he's on a journey. That's right. Maybe he's somewhere out taking a walk. Maybe he's asleep. That's right. Listen at this quickly. In 1 Kings 18 and verse 27. All right. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them. Yeah. And said, cry aloud. Cry aloud. For he is a God. You're just praying to three gods. That's what I'm telling you. Cry aloud. Cry Loud. Maybe one of them fellas will hear you. Uh -huh. right. Either he is talking. Maybe he's talking. Or he is pursuing. Maybe he's chasing something. Or he is in a journey. Maybe he's on a journey. Or peradventure he sleepeth yes. and must be awake. Uh -huh. And they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lances. All right. Till the blood gushed out upon them. Then what? And it came to pass when midday and was passed. And it came to pass when midday was passed. And they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening the sacrifice. Time of the evening sacrifice. And there was neither voice nor any to answer nor any that regarded. Elijah come along and tell Tell them, come on around here. Come near unto me. Come unto and me. All, and all the people came near unto him. My God, they got so upset, they tore down the altar and broke it all up. But Elijah come along by the inspiration of Almighty God and rebuilt the altar. Mm -hmm. He come along and repaired the and altar. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that Listen was broken that, down. He repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took 12 stones. Uh-oh. Amen. He had, he, he had to do it the right way. That's right. Viewers, we are determined to do it the right way. That's you right. come along out here and try to break down the church with these fictitious beliefs mm -hmm. and this ungodly worship that comes so 
deep from the pits of hell and the blind and the ignorant and the dumb and the weak and them that is manipulated by the devil which is the father of the world. That's right. You follow it, That's right. to hell you go and God knows. That's right. The things of God got to be built up. That's right. Need to be repaired. Repair the altar of the Lord. Do what? Repair the altar of the Lord. Repair. That was broken down. That wick is broken down. And Elijah took 12 stones. He took 12 stones. According to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob. Amen. He took 12 stones that represent the 12 tribes of Israel. Unto whom the word of the Lord came, came that saying. That let you know he, he done it because the word of the Lord was backing him. Saying, Israel shall be Israel thy name. Israel shall be thy name. Shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. Notice everything in the Lord's name. Uh -huh. And he made a trench about the altar. Made a trench around it. As great as would contain two measures of seed. Then what? And he put the wood in order. What? He put the wood in order. He didn't just sacrifice. He wasn't going to sacrifice and do anything. No. He take the wood in order. Mm -hmm. The wood now is out of order. That's right. God told Jeremiah, I'll make the people wood. Mm -hmm. And I make thine words fire and it shall consume them. Right, right now, the wood is out of order. That's right. And the only thing that's going to put the wood, the people of the human race in order, mm -hmm. is God everlasting word. So viewers, the word of God, the way of holiness is designed to put you in order. You may not want to be orderly, but this thing going to put you in order. In order. God knows. That's right. All right. And he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces. Yeah. And laid them on the wood and said, fill four barrels with water. Four barrels with water. And poured on the burnt sacrifice and on the wood. Then what? And he said, do it the second time. And they did it the second time. Then what? And he said, do it the third time. And they did it the third time. They got four barrels of water and poured it on the sacrifice three times. Four right. times three is 12. 12. Which match out with the 12 stones, which all represent the 12 times of Israel. Mm -hmm. And then Peter come along, thank God, on the day of Pentecost let you know that each tribe of Israel got to have water. That's right. He said let all the That's house right. of Israel know surely that God had made the same Jesus whom you crucified both Lord and Christ. That's when right. they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, mm -hmm. then and brethren, mm -hmm. what shall we do? And then Peter began to cry out to repent and be baptized every one of you. Every one of you. Every one of you. That's right. Thank God in the name of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. for the mission of sin you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Right. He got 12 barrels of water. Each stone, each tribe must go down in water yeah. in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's right. All right. And the water ran round about the altar and he filled the trench also with water. Yes. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice uh -huh. that Elijah the prophet came near yes. and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel. He began to talk to the God of heaven. That's right. Amen. We're working on his eyes, his eyes, a, flame, a of flame of fire. Here's the prophet begin to pray. That's Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Let it be known this day. I want everybody to know this day. That thou art God in Israel. Thou art God's. God. G-O-D. In Israel. Glory to God. I want everyone to know now that thou art God in the truth of God. God. Just one. That's right. Mm -hmm. Come on, son. Let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel. What is it? And that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Yes. Hear me, O Lord, hear me. Hear me, O Lord. Hear me. Hear what I'm telling you. That this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou, thou, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Eh? Then the fire of the Lord fell. Here it is. Amen. Eyes, eyes. Eyes, a flame, a flame of, fire. of fire. That's right. You know, someone with their eyes, you know whether they want to be around you. Yeah. You can look at their eyes. It is written, the eyes are the light of the body. That's you can look at a person's eyes and sometimes see what's in them. That's right. Amen. You know, they're pleasant to be around. Then you can look at a person's eyes and see how mean-spirited they are, yeah. how evil they are, how ungodly they are. That's right. Amen. And you, look, you, you get far away from them. Yeah. Uh -huh. Then the fire of the Lord fell. The fire of the Lord fell. And consumed the burnt sacrifice. Consumed the burnt sacrifice. And the wood. And the wood. And the stones. All right, and the stones. And licked up the and water. And licked up the, the water. So his eyes as a flame of, as fire, flame of fire. That's where you have God being a consuming fire. That's right. That means by the power of his word, by the authority of his word, the Holy Ghost come along and consume everything in you that's not like God. And that same fire. 
that same fire that consumes the carnal mind and consumes the wickedness of the heart and consumes the deeds of the body and consumes the corruption of the spirit, that same fire come on back and comfort comforter. you That's because right. the Holy Ghost is called the comforter. comforter. Huh? Thank right. God he said the comforter. When John said one come after me that's going to baptize you, amen, with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. fire. He going to baptize with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. Mm. That fire is the Holy Ghost but the comforter. that Holy Ghost is the comforter. That's right. The Bible says. In St. John 14 and verse 26. But the comforter. Which is the which Holy is Ghost. God. Which is the Holy Ghost. Which is God. Whom the Father will send in my name. Whom God shall send in my name. He shall teach you all things. He's going to teach you everything. And bring all things to your remembrance. Bring everything to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said Whatever unto you. Whatever I have told you. So yes. As, as the flame of fire mean the Lord is a comforter right. and a consumer. You know this word of God will comfort your heart. Oh, yeah. And then that word of God will come back and give you pain. It'll consume everything in you. Because when a thing is being, brother, when you're going through the process of being consumed, you hurt. Oh, yeah. There's no maybe so about it. You're hurting God knows. That's right. Because that thing that's in you that don't want to come out gripped you tight. That's right. But the word of God hurts you. Yeah. Why? And I advise you, because your body is a sacrifice, you better stay on the altar. And let the word of God burn you. Just let it burn Amen. until you get well done. But Pastor Jennings, it's hot. How long I got to stay there till Jesus come? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Just stay there till Jesus come. Amen. Thank God. And then we're going to come with the word of God and turn you over and make sure that side of that Everything. Everything. Burn you up. That's right. Amen. Amen. He, he told the prophet, I'd make the people wood. Wood. And I'd make thine words fire. fire. Amen. So you might no. as well get prepared to get burned. You may not want to. Now, the false prophet don't burn you. No. Amen. He just come along and drop some sauce on you. Amen. And marinate you with three gods and marinate you with all type of religious rubbish that your flesh want to do anyway. That's, That's right. why you embrace them. You love them. You allure him, you praise him, you, but you can be a church going hellion all you want. That's but right. I want to tell you right now, your commitment and your loyalty to that man made religion is not going to get you to the kingdom of God at all. At all. Let's go back to the book of Revelation, son. Remember, the, his eyes were well, as, as a, flame of fire. a flame of fire, which means he's a comforter as well as a consuming fire. That's right. All right. And his feet like unto fine brass. His feet like unto, like fine, unto brass, fine brass. As if they burned in a as furnace. As they burn. Burned in a furnace. That don't mean that he was a colored God. Mm -mm. He was colored. <laughs> yeah. Hey Amen. Back in the old day, they say you're colored. <laughs> colored water fountain. Colored. And Colors only. That's right. Amen. And they use the scripture to say, you see that God is colored. That's right. Or they, or they say God is black. Yeah. Now do you hear? Do you hear what the word of God said? And I, I want to itemize this. Mm -hmm. I believe and connect with the book of Numbers. Numbers. All right, listen now. I want I want you, I'm itemizing what these things represent, viewers. Mm -hmm. Follow me. And his feet like unto fine brass. His feet mm -hmm. like fine brass. As if they As burn. If if they, they burn, burn in a furnace. Now, Amen. if you look at anything burning in a furnace like brass, mm -hmm. then it has the color of like a bright orange. That's right. Like the color of amber. Amber. Bright orange. That's right. Brass don't mean he's colored. <laughs> Amen. You that no. still use that 1912 language. Hmm. Amen. I just want to roast you a little. Brass don't mean God is colored. That's right. Or God is black. This script is not dealing with God's race. No. Race at all. Oh, no. Dealing with God's power and God's authority. That's right. Now, here it is, his feet. Mm. Like unto fine brass. Like unto fine brass. As if they burned in the furnace. As if they burned in the furnace. Brass means he's a God of deliverance. That's right. That's what that means. That's right. Someone said, what? Yes, mm. brass means he's a God. God of deliverance. In the book of Numbers. In the book of Numbers, thank Chap God there was an Old Testament prophet, my God, who was the most humblest man of his time. That's right. By the name of Moses. That's right. Amen. And God dealt with Moses. That's right. 
Moses had so much authority given to him from God until he spoke under the inspiration of God and began to tell us that God shall raise up a prophet like me. Like me. That's right. And they say that prophet that's going to come going to be like him. Like, that's right. And then he said, him yes. shall you hear. Mm -hmm. Who would take God in all things. Well, who was that prophet Moses was talking about? He was talking about the coming of Jesus. That's right. He wasn't talking about the coming of no bishop. No. Not the coming of no elder. No, no. Not the coming of no apostle. No. So any man come tell you that when the Bible says God gonna raise up a prophet like me, I want to certify that as I go now. I want Deuteronomy. to read that. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Even Deuteronomy, and then I want to go to the book of Acts. Amen. When the apostles enlightened and, and, and certified it, and then let us know. Who was the Bible talk about? Deuteronomy chapter 18 and at verse 15. And I want part of the package. I got to get the whole package here. Amen. Listen. Deuteronomy 18 and verse 15. I want to show you the authority that God gave Moses. Uh -huh. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet. The Lord thy God Amen. shall raise up to thee a prophet. One. A prophet. Oh, one. Only one is going to fulfill the scripture. That's right. Only one. A prophet. Coming that's going to It ain't me. <laughs> nah, it ain't, it ain't Pastor. Pastor Jenny, you that prophet, I think you that prophet that Moses spoke about. You think a lie. That's right. Eh? No, no, I'm not, I'm not, I am not he. You better <laughs> right. look for another. <laughs> eh? That's right. Are you the one? No. <laughs> you better look for another. That's right. Go ahead, take God. That's right. Eh? The Lord thy God. The Lord thy God. Will raise up unto Go thee a prophet. God. You see, an honest man. Yeah, that's what, even if God sent a man, that man better be careful. Yeah. Even if God sent him and give him a abundance of revelation, he got to stay humble with it. If not, he'll make a declaration of scripture that only God can be honored with. That's right. And he'll declare himself. That's one of the reasons why God Almighty, because of the abundance of revelation that Apostle Paul had, God sent the messenger of Satan, the Buffered him. Yeah. Amen. Paul said, unless I get exalted above measure. Amen. So God allowed that to be to keep Paul under subjection. That's right. When God, uh, one preacher said, when you get the revelation of God, it, it can't get you exalted. That's not the truth. That's not the truth. Oh, yes, it can. That's right. Why you think God allow a messenger of Satan to buffet Paul? That's and right. And Paul told you because of the abundance. But it's a revelation. revelation. You can be a man of God. God called, God sent, predestinated before the foundation of the world. Right. And then allow yourself to get exalted and declare a scripture is talking about you yeah. and it's talking about God only. That's right. Jesus only. That's and right. I want everybody to hear and give this gift chapter and verse again, son. Deuteronomy 18 and verse 15. All right. The, the Lord thy God will raise the Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet. I want everybody in the world to hear me. In case your bishop, <laughs> in case your bishop, your son of Sam, your <laughs> demonic devil in a pulpit is up there now saying that when Moses spoke this, he was talking and your bishop said, I'm that prophet who Moses spoke about here, Pastor Jennings now. And let me tell you and your bishop, it's a lie. That's a Even lie. if your bishop was God called and God sent. Somebody said, well, how can a God man say that? You run ahead of the spirit. Right. You're in the flesh. Right, right then you spoke out of carnality and you lie. That's right. Ah! The Lord thy God. The Lord thy God. Shall raise up unto thee a prophet. Shall raise up unto thee. A How prophet. many? A prophet. How many? A prophet. I gladly tell you, it ain't me. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. So I said, well, you think the prophet will come after you? He already been, he ain't gone. That's right. And I'm going to certify that. Listen. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet, a prophet from the midst of thee of thy brother. From the midst of thee of thy brother. Like unto me. He gonna look at look at the authority that God gave Moses. He's gonna be like me. Unto him ye shall hearken. Unto them shall ye hearken. Unto him ye shall hearken. Unto him shall ye hearken. All I right. Will, All right, go on. Now in Deuteronomy 18 and verse 18. Yes. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren. Yes. Like unto thee. Like unto me. I, like unto thee. Uh -huh. And will put my words I'm in his mouth. put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command. Yes. 
And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my word, yes. which he shall speak in my name, uh -huh. I will require it of him. All right, now let's see who was this prophet that the Bible's talking about yet. Now in the book of Acts chapter 3, we're at verse 22. You see where the devil slip in and try to tear down the altar? Amen. The devil try to tear down the altar. And I don't, that, listen, I want everybody to hear me. That right. do not exempt a God called God sent man. Right. If he become careless with the Bible, he allowed the devil to slip in and start to tear down even though God sent him to build up. If right. he take his eyes off God, he'll start to tear down the very thing that God sent him to build up. Oh, hey, that's right. Get me? That's right. I'm warning you now. I'm warning you. That's right. I'm warning you. You better take heed. Amen. I don't care if you got so much anointing that you walk around on your toes like someone do ballet and go Acts 38 on your big toe. But when you come back down flat footed on the earth, you better land right here in that book. In the book. The Holy Ghost said. Now in the book of Acts chapter 3, we'll start at verse 20. All right, begin at, at verse 18. At verse 18. Listen. But those things which God before it showed by the mouth of all his prophets. Yes. That Christ should suffer. That Christ would suffer. He had so fulfilled. Uh -huh. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Yes. And the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Uh -huh. And he shall send Jesus Christ. Wait a minute. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. What's the subject? Jesus Christ. He shall send. He shall send Jesus Christ. The Bible said he shall send Jesus Christ. Which, which before was preached unto you. Which before was, was preached unto you. Whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things. Yes. Which God had spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets. What did he say there? Which God had, which God had spoken by the mouth. spoken by the mouth. Of all his holy of prophets. Of all his holy messengers. Since the world began. Since the world was. For Moses truly said Moses unto the fathers. Moses truly said about this Jesus. A prophet. A prophet. Shall the Lord your shall God the raise Shall the Lord up, your God. Raise up unto you. Raise up unto you. Of your brethren. Of of your brother like unto me like me him like me like me like me that's him right. him shall ye hear him. all things shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you whatever he say to you and it shall come to pass that every soul which will hear not that prophet uh -huh. shall be destroyed from among the people well someone say well how was Moses and Jesus alike I'll be glad to show you that's right when Moses was born a proclamation was sent out by the, the king at that time. Kill all the male children. When Jesus was born, That's right. Herod sent out the proclamation. That's right. Kill all the male children. Yeah. Amen. And then the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph and said, Take the woman and the, and the child and flee to Egypt. Flee Egypt. Why? That it might be fulfilled a son shall rise out of Egypt. Here come Moses rising out of Egypt to lead a people out of bondage. Here come Jesus come along being raised up of God to lead a people out of spiritual Egypt or lead a people out of sin. Moses fast 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus fast 40 days and 40 nights. Here come Moses talk thank God to the burning bush. A bush represents that which is natural. The burning represents that which is divine. Here comes Jesus. Bless God being a natural plant or representing a natural plant until he said, I am the true vine. Hallelujah. Take God. True the true vine. True vine. And my father is the husband man. That's right. Meaning my father, which is the spirit, that's the fire. That's right. That's the anointing. That's hallelujah. Glory to God. That's the thing that got me burning. Right. Amen. I just want to straighten that out. So if there's any bishop, any so-called apostle, any elder, I don't care if he's so deep, you read the Bible in hell over the weekend. Hmm. If you read the Bible right in hell hmm. over the weekend and then come out in time enough for your morning service. My Lord. If you say you were that prophet... I and if you say you are that prophet, right. even if you're God sent, you lied. That's right. Yeah. For Moses truly said unto the Father. The Bible says Moses truly said, truly unto, the said to the Father. A prophet. A prophet. Shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brother. And a man of God under the sun can take this credit to himself. That's right. He can't take it to himself. Let's go back to Revelation. Amen. Let's give the feet. 
and they get back to Deuteronomy and explain the brass. I just wanted to straighten that out. That's right. Amen. And just because I know there's many men who try to pull scriptures to make themselves, amen, equal to Jesus. But uh, who is, uh, is it written? The Lord says, who is my equal? My equal. Say after the Holy One. That's right. Amen. Who is my equal? Say after the Holy One. Amen. There was one former bishop who used that exact scripture oh, yeah. to describe himself. He said, I am that prophet whom Moses talked about. He said, read between the lines. I'm not going to read between nothing. Amen. I'm going to read. Uh, the Bible didn't tell me to read between the lines. No. The Bible says it's going to be given line upon line. upon line. Precept upon precept. Not read between them. If <laughs> I read right. between the lines, ain't nothing there but blank space. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Anything, if, you, if, you, if you look at anything that's written, and somebody said, read between the lines. Look at your Bible now a few seconds real quick. Look at your Bible and look at between the lines. It's white space. Amen. Blank. It is not God's will for us to read between no lines. No, no, it is God's real will for us to read what is written. That's right. Whatsoever thing that are written, 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 written a full time is written for our learning. That's right. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's why a man of God, yes, but a man of God better be careful. Oh, yeah. He better be careful. That's he right. better be careful. I don't care if you're God called and God sent. You better be careful. I can find men of God all down through the Bible that have errored. That's right. That, hallelujah. That's Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They have errored. That's right. Amen. Even David. David was they were David. God preached David. That's right. And said, I found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. One that will fulfill all my will. That's right. And here's that same man. We ain't got another man's wife. The man got killed, sent him on out there, and let him die and fight and take his <laughs> wife and got the woman pregnant. And then uh, when he heard the whisper, bless God, he, he went before God and prayed and mm -hmm. asked God to forgive him. And then he heard the whispering around there. The child is dead. David knew, oh, I got out of this. Glory to God. That's right. David, David knew. <laughs> I got out of this. That's and right. God answered his prayer. God had let the woman have a miscarriage. That's right. It's written that David rose from his throne, amen, and changed his garment and washed himself. I don't care how much anointing you got, no. amen. You don't see where God calling everybody a man after his own heart. You know what a title that you have? My Lord. But at the same time, That's right. David still got wrong. Now, right. what make these men of yesterday? different from a lot of these men today humility was that yeah. the men of yesterday brother they when they done wrong they humbled themselves before God because they understood what can come after that act and they humbled themselves before God that the judgment and the terror of God don't come upon them that's right that's right you ain't gonna get me to declare nothing in that Bible to be me and it ain't me amen I ain't doing it. That's right. And I ain't going to let nobody try to throw a scripture on me and say, Pastor Jennings, that's you. I know it ain't. That's right. I know where I'm at in here. <laughs> and I know where I'm not at in here. Amen. I don't Amen. need your help to show me where I'm at in here. I know where I'm at in here. Let every man abide in his calling. What? Let every man abide in the same calling. Get, get, you, better, you better give chapter and verse for this. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and at verse 20. The Holy Ghost said. Let every man. How much? Let every man. You can jump and shout and jump across chairs and I don't care nothing about that stuff. <laughs> Hold right. your hands over your ears. You can preach laying on your back if possible. Amen. Lay on your back and preach and put your heels up in the air like a baby about to have his diaper changed. I don't care. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Can you imagine that? Uh, some fella's supposed to be so much anointing, he land on his back with his feet up in the air like his mom about to change his diaper. Amen. You can roll around and scream and holler <laughs> like you have agony. I don't get more care about that at all. At all. Because the only thing is just me, I'm coming right back to Bible. That's it. I'm coming back to Scripture. That's right. I respect any man that God called and God sent. Mm -hmm. But if that man deviates from the Word of God and I look at the Word of God and see that deviation just as clear, That's I believe in calling a spade a spade. That's right. Now, the mistake that the human family have made is believing that a man of God cannot get wrong. That's it ain't right. no Bible teach that lie. No. For there is no man that sinneth not, 
Did you hear the Bible? In 1 Kings chapter 8 and at verse 36. Yes. At verse 46. All right. 1 Kings 8 and verse 46. All right, if they sin against thee. What? If they sin against if thee. If they sin against for thee. For there is no man that sinneth not. There is no man that sinneth not. And thou be angry with them. All right, let's go back to what you was getting ready to read. Let everybody abide where they're called. Back in 1 Corinthians 7 and at verse 20. Follow me. Let every man abide in the same calling. Wait a minute. Amen. Let every man abide in the same calling. Wherein he was called. Wherever you was called, stay there. That's right. If God made you an apostle, don't say you're a messiah. <laughs> That's right. Don't That's elevate right. yourself. Amen. That's right. Amen. If you only can cook greens, don't try to cook meat. Amen. If you can't bake a cake, stick the greens. <laughs> That's right. Amen. Let every man abide in Amen. the same calling wherein he was called. That because you carry a hammer and carry pliers, that don't mean you're a carpenter. Give chapter and verse for this. First Corinthians chapter 7 and at verse 20. Now the child, and like I said before, my father here have his hammer and pliers and whatnot working in the house. Well, I wanted it. Hmm. I, I thought that, you know, yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. That's the man thing. My father went and bought me my tool set. <laughs> they all were plastic though. And I remember he was working in the kitchen and he had his hammer hitting the pipe. And I got my hammer, but I knew something was wrong because my hammer wouldn't make the same sound. Amen. He was hitting that pipe. And I remember having mine, I'm hitting the pipe. And I wonder something's wrong. Something's <laughs> wrong. And I asked my father, what's wrong with my hammer? <laughs> he said, ain't nothing wrong with it, your hammer ain't real. And I, right then I realized I was duped. <laughs> I was <laughs> right then I realized my, my father he duped me. Now I wasn't ready for the real hammer. That's right. Amen. Glory to God. Viewers, God had made me a preacher and I got a real hammer here. Oh, yeah. Many of you following men they got a plastic hammer. That's right. Many of you following men they got a plastic hammer. Yeah. That's why it don't sound the same. Amen. Eh? Amen. That's why what come out of that church don't sound the same. That's right. And if you don't believe it, you can listen to a there. man preach Acts 38. Preach repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And then listen to a God sent man preach the same thing. They're quoting the same scripture, yeah. quoting the same truth, but it don't even sound the same. That's true. Because that man without the spirit, he quotes it, but dead. Yeah. No fire in him. Right. No fire, no authority, uh, no right. power in them. That's right. Hallelujah. We're going to take God none at all. All right, go back to the book of Revelation. Let's get, we're covering quite a bit of ground here. Back Amen. in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 15. All right. And his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. All right, let's go to the book of our, uh, Numbers. Numbers, if I'm correct. Numbers chapter 21. I want to show you that brass means that he's a deliverer. Right. Brass don't mean he's colored, <laughs> and it don't mean that he's a black god. That's no, right. I don't mean that at all. All right, follow me in your Bible. Numbers chapter 21, we're at verse 6. Yes. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. Now, Israel was hard head. Them Israelites were some stubborn, hard head, carnal minded, wicked, rebellious people, yet they were the children of God. That's right. Just as hard head as that devil, God will deliver them from one thing. They'll walk with God for a period of time, then turn it back and go on and do whatever it is they want to do. But I'm telling you, you better thank God for God's mercy. Oh, yeah. Because if God wasn't merciful, nobody would be standing here. That's I right. wouldn't. You wouldn't either. That's right. And Williams wouldn't have no one to read to because he wouldn't be here either. <laughs> That's right. And then because a man that believed in three gods, you know he would have went to hell. God knows. <laughs> Huh? That's right. All right, come on, Williams. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. I want to show you what brass mean. God sent fiery serpents. And they bit the people. They bit the people. And much people of Israel died. Yes. Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, but we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Now the people transgressed. Yeah. They spoke against God, and God sent fiery serpents upon the Israelites as a form of punishment. That's right. Uh -huh. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the fire. Pray unto the Lord that, that he, he take, take away, away the, the fiery serpents, from, serpents us. from us. And Moses prayed for the people. Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses. Now God going to give Moses instructions. Make thee a fiery serpent and set it up upon a pole. Yes. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten when he looketh upon it shall live. I want you to make a fiery serpent, put it on a pole. Mm -hmm. and whoever look at it, they'll live. And Moses made a serpent of brass. Oh. 
That's right. Moses made a serpent of brass. And put it up upon a pole. And put it up on a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man. And now if the fire, it came to pass that if anybody that was bitten by the fiery serpent. When he beheld the serpent of brass. When he beheld the serpent of brass that he, Moses was instructed to make. He lived. He would live. That's right. Now, in the natural, sure. if a serpent bites you and inject venom, yeah. a lot of times the doctors get venom to counteract venom. That's right. So Israel was bitten by a fiery serpent. Yeah. And God instructed Moses to make a serpent out of brass and nice. hold, put it up on a pole. Whoever look at it mm -hmm. will be healed from the bite. That's right. And the apostles come along and told us what that represents. That's right. As Moses. My In the book God, of St. John chapter 3. Listen at this. St. John 3 and verse 14. What is it? And as Moses lifted, as up, Moses the serpent, lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Even so must the Son of Man even be so lifted up. Even so the Son of Man be lifted up. That whosoever believeth in that him. That whoever believeth in him. Should not perish. Shall not perish. But have eternal life. But have eternal life. Now here we were. We were bitten by the fiery serpent. Oh, yes. And that fiery serpent was Satan. That's, That's right. why it, it takes fire to fight fire. Yeah. And here come the Lord Jesus Christ was up on the cross and you had to look unto him. Look unto That's him. why the book says, look unto me and be you save all the ends of the earth for I am God and there's none else. That's for right. healing you had to look to Jesus. For deliverance you got to look to Jesus. For, uh, for, for power or prayer being answered, you got to look to Jesus. So just like they had to look to the serpent to get healed from the bite, right. we had to look to Jesus so we can get healed from our bite. That's we right. was born in a world with sin and shape into iniquity and fashion and lust and the only thing that's going to get us out of that state is the power of God himself. Right. All right, back in Revelation, real quick. Back in Revelation 1 and verse 15. Uh -huh. And his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. Brass mean he's a deliverer. All right. And his voice, his voice as the sound of many as waters. As the sound of many waters, meaning he speak with authority. Right. You know, when God talk, you're going to hear. Oh, yeah. When God speak, God going, you, you're going to hear. That's right. God have a way of making you hear. That's right. God don't care how tough you are. You know, I meet some people so arrogant. So self-righteous and so self-centered. That's all right. That's all right. Be a hellion on earth. But God have a way of humbling you, Miss Thing. That's right. Mr. Man, God will humble you. He'll oh, yeah. touch anything. Oh, yeah. Make you lose your job. Make you lose your house or your apartment. That's right. Strip your buck naked. Yeah. Make you lose your clothing. Take oh, your yeah. husband away. Oh, yeah. Take away your wife. Take away your children. That's right. Take everything until you got to fall down and wish of him. That's right. What is that? And his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in the yes. fire. Yes. And his voice is the sound of many words. God speak with authority. All right. And he had in his right hand seven stars. Wait a minute. He had in his right hand seven stars. Seven stars. Seven stars are the seven angels sent to the seven churches of Asia. That's right. Why is it called seven stars? Stars that which shows itself at night. Yeah. You can't see the sun, but the stars reflect the sun that you can't see at night. Well, the preacher represents the star because God sent him in the midst of a dark time. Yeah. I don't mean night time, but in the midst of an evil, wicked, and ungodly people. Right. So the seven stars are the seven angels sent to the churches of Asia, and angel means messenger. And the preacher must reflect the light of God, just like the stars up in the sky reflect the light of the sun. That's right. uh -huh. And he had in his right hand seven stars. In the right hand, the right, right hand. hand, right hand. That's right. right hand mean power, right hand mean authority. That's so the preacher got to have the power of God, and he'll be given the authority of God, the function and the will of God, that it be preached the standard of God. That's right. uh -huh. And out of his mouth, when a sharp two-edged sword. Wait a minute. What come out of his mouth? And out of his mouth when a sharp two-edged sword. Let's see what the two-edged sword is. Hebrews chapter 4. Give it a book of Hebrews if you will. Amen. Amen. The preacher got to preach the word of God and it got to come out of his mouth. A sharp right. two-edged sword. Two-edged sword. Listen at this. Hebrews chapter 12, a 4 and at verse 12. Read it chapter and verse again. Hebrews chapter 4 and at verse 12. What is it? For the word of God is quick. What is it? The word of God. What is, is it? The word of God. The word of God is quick, quick and powerful, powerful and sharper, sharper than any two-edged sword. Than any two-edged sword. What does it do to you, Williams? Piercing. Piercing. Even to the dividing Even asunder of soul and, and spirit. Of soul and spirit. And of the joints and marrow. Get all in the joints. Uh -huh. And is, is a discerner it, of it, the thoughts. It knows what your heart feels. And intents of the heart. Do, it does what? 
and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. They know what you're thinking. That's right. And they know what you feel. That's right. Uh -huh. All Nick, right, go back to finish up Revelation now. Back in Revelation chapter 1 and at verse 16. Uh -huh. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. Out of his mouth come the sharpness and strictness and power of his word. And his countenance, his countenance was as the sun shineth in, in his strength. His power. Amen. God, great power. That's right. Amen. I believe one scripture talk about his coming, how he would destroy them with the brightness of his coming. Of his coming. Uh -huh. And when I saw him. When I saw them. When I saw him. We only see one. That's right. Him. None with him. Him. None with him. And when I saw him. When I saw him. I fell at his feet as dead. I fell at dead. his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me. And said him, what? Saying unto me, fear not. Fear not. I am the first. I am the first. And the last. And the last. I am he that liveth. I am he that liveth. And was dead. And behold. I am alive forevermore. That's, Amen. That, that's God talking. That's, that's, that's God. Jesus talking. That's right. That's Christ talking. That's right. That's Jehovah talking. So viewers, that's not talking about he's colored. <laughs> no. That's talking about the attributes of God. Actually. Or the different functions of God. Give me Acts 2, 38. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. All right. Then Peter said unto them, repent. All right, viewers and you that are here. Mm -hmm. I understand that some of us about five this morning. Went down in water this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Wonderful. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. Anybody else here want to obey the word of God and get your sins washed away? And be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus if you Christ. want to stand on your feet. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Pandemic or no pandemic, we're still fishing. That's right. At least the water is not contaminated. That's right. We're still fishing. And we're going to keep fishing. Keep God be fishing. our helper. Did Jesus come? Come on back, God willing, at 4 o'clock. And like I said before, we will announce when we go back to our regular time of service. Our regular time of service, and that way the saints can come on back to the house of God. We'll take your temperature and whatnot when you come, and things of that order, and for the safety of each other. That's right. Amen. And I advise you to always keep one another in prayer. Turn in again. Four o'clock, viewers. You got a belly full today. Oh, yeah. Remember, oh, don't yeah. you go to your church. Mm. Don't you go to your church. Let the truth of God be your church. I talked to an old mother last week. Amen. Old mother. Uh, mother Belly. And I want to greet Mother Belly down there in Mississippi. About 80 years old. Thank God she was rejoicing. I got a chance to talk to her. She was so happy. Old mother came from 22nd and Bayman Street. She said she wasn't there when the old bishop was there. She said she was there when things went wrong. She said and after that she got out of there. She said, Pastor Jennings, when I look at the truth of God, it just gives me such joy in my old age to know that the word of God is truly being preached. That's right. The holiness is like a life raft. And you're holding on to that life raft floating in the world of turmoil. The only thing that keeps you from sinking is God everlasting word. Come on back at 4 o'clock. Remember, everybody go to the lower auditorium. Let's help get some cleaning done and whatnot. Make sure you got your masks on and gloves on. Remember, the exit down to the lower auditorium is behind the, I call it the faith wall that I designed. They got the big spheres on that's one entryway another entryway on uh lindley avenue as well the entryway through the main lobby to the main auditorium we not gonna let you through that way because they're working in the main lobby area and uh once uh we start getting some bids in for our balconies and see what the quotes are then we'll get ready to start working uh and get our balconies our two more new balconies built in the main auditorium, God be our helper. Let us all stand. Consider yourself dismissed. Peace be unto you.